To say Ubisoft has missed with Assassin's Creed Shadows would be the biggest understatement of the year. Everything that they do in regards to 2024's upcoming biggest bomb of the year, just when you thought that Suicide Squad kills the Justice League couldn't be the biggest affront to culture, Ubisoft went hold my soy latte and decided to take, again, I will re-I will re-emphasize this for the people in the back, the feudal Japan setting has been highly requested as a set piece for the Assassin's Creed franchise for as long as Assassin's Creed has been a franchise. It was a slam dunk. All you needed to do was have a Japanese guy in your Japanese-centric story, but this is 2024 after all, and it's not enough. It is not enough that you could simply tell a historically accurate tale. No, 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 no need to go ahead and capitulate to a crowd that we have figured out over and over again isn't that big. They aren't that supportive at all, but they sure as hell are loud on social media, so you need to appease those freaks because you think that that's going to be your audience? Well, it isn't. How many more examples do we need of this? But Ubisoft thinks, okay, they've got the solution to this. They can go ahead and they can be the ones to write the ship, even though this is the same Ubisoft. Now, thought that they could make Assassin's Creed into the biggest gaming franchise ever had to walk everything back put the franchise on ice for a couple of years and then reboot it to a much smaller audience so even diving deeper into those personal politics that's a way to create a masterpiece yeah i don't quite think so but i'm uh, but i hear you say i hear you say some corners out there okay some of the freaks maybe the 10 reliable freaks that whenever i do a marvel video always seems to come back around just to dislike thanks for your viewership i don't care but I'm glad that you're some of the most loyal people that I have. Okay. Maybe this disclaimer's for you. Don, Don, you don't know this game is going to be great. It's going to be the best thing that Assassin's Creed has done for a long time. You're just hung up because there's a black guy in it and he was actually there. Yasuke is a historical figure. I was like, yeah, he definitely rhymes with something that sounds like figure. But if you want to get real historical about this, like the Assassin's Creed franchise used to in some form or fashion, he was a sword bearer for Nobunaga. Okay, Emperor Nobunaga during the feudal Japan era, ripe storytelling purposes. But no, 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 no. They're going to go ahead and extrapolate this fringe individual. This, as it was described, not in the revisionist history that's out there from the freaks that went and edited the Wikipedia pages on Yasuke, okay, as... Uh, Nobunaga himself paraded him around, tried to clean his skin because he wouldn't believe that Yasuke was in fact a person of melanin, paraded him around like a novelty. And it's so strange, right? Because this happened some five, six hundred years ago. He was a novelty then for Nobunaga, and now in 2024, he can be a novelty for that same reasoning and ideology but now it's just a bunch of less powerful freaks that are losing their power as the days go on because this is going to be a tremendous just backfire like you can see from the previous headline every single major publication of that trailer has been ratioed into the ground and some people who think that any interaction is good interaction that uh, thumbs up thumbs down who really cares at the end of the day no when you're trying to sell a product when you're trying to drain 60, well, no, these don't cost, like the bare budget is what, 70, and then if you're up in Canada, $90. Like, I would never drop $90 on this crap. I haven't bought an Assassin's Creed game since the launch, uh, the Black Flag? Black Flag or the three? I can't quite remember which one it was. I might've got Black Flag a little bit later, but it's been a long time. It's been about a decade, so none of these reboot ones have really tickled my fancy and then especially with all of this crap over top of it and then oh yeah ubisoft appears to confirm that assassin's creed shadows protagonist so guess what you know naoi your female historically inaccurate shinobi yeah she can also be searching for retribution for her family and then also a little gash on the side because yep they're both going to be big gay icons so they can be novelties for a different group now how fantastic that's great shadows developer ubisoft appears to confirm that the games too a main protagonist, Yasuke and Naoi, are uh, alphabet people. How wonderful.
A blog post on the company's website published on May 15th, the company declared Naomi and Yasuke's uh, disparate personalities also lead them to have different relationships and rapport with some uh, with other characters. And they don't always feel the same way about people, nor do people always feel the same way about them. Next, they discuss romance options. Yes, because that's what I want in my revenge tales. Who is that person boning? Yeah, they can be ancillary to the overarching story. That's fine. That's why I don't pray, er, place any stock that this thing is going to be a sleeper hit. They're just putting their diversity, equity, and inclusion over the top of this, but they really have an important story to tell. No, it's just, it's the same crap over and over again. This is what happens when you let these freaks in the door. They ruin everything. Romantically, they will also attract and be attracted to different types of people. They're gay. Uh, though... Oh, through the pair, players will get to experience a multitude of relationships. It's not what anybody plays an Assassin's Creed game for. It's not, like, the other big relationship mechanic-based games, the ones that I'm thinking about, Dragon Age, um, Mass Effect, those are the ones that just immediately come to mind that have a very prominent romance mechanic to them. Nobody played those games for those mechanics, and until they reached meme status for just, you know, having two cardboard cutouts kind of rubbed together, and then there was a cut to black, and then an awkward exchange before everybody went on, you know, the collector-based mission at the end of, you know, 2, and then it was used in a bit of the marketing for Mass Effect 3, because it, it, it achieved kind of cringe meme status at that point in time. But it was never a driving factor. It was never something that Bioware put front and center. But Ubisoft decided, you know what? It's not enough. It's not enough that we're going to have to focus on this. Samurai, this ninja story, we also got to figure out where they're going to be sticking their sword and what they're going to be aiming their throwing stars at. Ugh, who gives a shit? Revelation comes amid Ubisoft contra er, contracting with Dartmouth associate professor Sachi Schmidt Hori, who touched on this interesting individual in I think the previous video on the subject, but just as a refresher course, yes, as a, a big gay activist with her biography on Dartmouth's website reading, I'm interested in investigating how gender, sexuality, corporeality, and power are represented and negotiated in pre 17th century Japanese narratives and illustrations. What a horribly boring subject of study. Normally, this is something that you hear from a barista when they're handing your drink towards you. Oh, wow, what did you get your degree in? Well, I got it in. Okay, thanks. Bye. See you later. My first book, Tales of Idolized Boys, a male male love and medieval Japanese narratives. I'm sure it sold in the, the, the tens of copies or however many family members had to grin and bear. It's like, oh, good. You didn't waste hundreds of thousands of dollars at college. College. Fantastic. It is on medieval Shingo uh, Mono Agatari, Buddhist acolyte tales, which they depict romantic relationships between Buddhist priests and adolescent boys. Fantastic stuff. Another activist come in and consulting. That's why, even if, even if the gameplay, but this is Ubisoft, so it's just going to be the exact same type of gameplay that they've been shilling out for the past decade and a half. Once they crafted their gameplay loop, and I would argue it was around the time of Assassin's Creed 2 and Far Cry 3 when they were at the top of the gaming industry and this is a long time ago I haven't iterated the only thing that they've done is continue to diminish any hope that they could have with their audience and any prestige that they had within the industry but hey I'm sure it resonates extremely well in the journalist class who are still propping this stuff up hey guys you just don't understand Yasuke's a very important mythological figure in Japan just ask the Japanese well not the Japanese, Japanese, ask the, the um, identify as Japanese types. What's her name? Just go ahead and ask um, the Shachi uh, Schmidt Hori. She's the type of Japanese that we want to hear from. Not, not the bigots who don't want the black samurai. But this isn't the only activist, by the way, this freak who's focused on uh, Japan's Nambla branch. Um, we're talking about, well, just take a look at the story group that's over there at Ubisoft. Do those look like people that you would trust in the reins to the Ubisoft story? No, of course not. The only thing that you know that they could go ahead and drive home is probably a strongly worded letter or a couple of screeches wanting to talk to the manager. But that's, that's your modern gaming landscape, okay? This is why I talk about this stuff all the time man because the gaming industry is run and operated by these types obviously but the only reason that they got in there is not because they're passionate about games there might be six of them that are in there okay i'll at least give them a half dozen that actually like video games that actually do this 
out of a passion of wanting to create the next Mario, the next Legend of Zelda, but the rest of them are just there to ruin everybody else's work, okay? Back when the gaming industry was a bunch of freaks creating the jumpy man on their computer in their garage, okay? When, when id Software was just John Carmack and John Romero bouncing ideas back and forth about how they could make a first-person game about running down corridors, shooting at space demons. The moment that those guys ended up seeing a glimmer of success was the moment that the predatory, talentless bitch succubus types started to come out of the woodworks, okay? That was the time when, oh man, they just, uh, a chick that they know who they really want to bone. Oh, she's just down on her luck. You know, her abusive boyfriend, uh, the, the, this one this week, uh, just left her high and dry and she has nowhere else to go. She just lost her job after partying for weeks on end. She just needs a place to crash for a minute and I gave her my spare room and hell, I'd, e I'd even give her my bed and I'd sleep on the floor because I'm such a good friend. And that they'd also give her a job because, oh, she went to school. She's got like a human resources degree and now, uh, oh yeah, we really need now that we're growing now that we're succeeding as a company oh we need somebody in the hiring department so that's how they can justify bringing in all of these uh, trash bag individuals okay and I don't want to paint them all i like i don't know who any of these people are with the exception of one that you might see right there in the background you can see where my cursor is hovering over the other blue-haired individual which if you work in any place that has anybody who has unnaturally dyed hair outside of a joke outside of a gimmick outside of a lost bet you're working in the wrong place you're working at a job that has a time clock running above your head whether you recognize it or not but just for pointing things out right there you might notice one face that's just looking over the shoulder of the blue-haired beluga whale and you might you might recognize her as kim belair now, if that name kind of sounds familiar and you can't quite place her to her current position, let me just elucidate and illuminate this for you because it all comes around full circle. I made mention of Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League right at the beginning of this video. Now, why did I do that? Because it was a gigantic bomb and a huge story of 2024. And to, uh, to kind of bookend this year, Assassin's Creed Shadows, when it eventually does launch, is of course going to be a similar type of bomb. Is it going to end up costing Ubisoft $200 million? Who knows? Only time will tell on that. But what was the big reason behind failure of Suicide Squad kills the Justice League? What got everybody's ire up on that? Well, that would be the writing. That would be the disrespect to the great, late great Kevin Conroy. And then, of course, as people started to get their hands on the game, they realized that it was just, oh, out of date gameplay loops that just haven't been fun for a long time. And also the atrocious writing. And that was brought to you in part by Sweet Baby Inc. Sweet Baby Inc. Now, who's in control of that? And what exactly do they do? Well, they're, of course, the consultancy firm that just goes ahead and prioritizes diversity, equity, and inclusion above all. All else when it comes to storytelling in video games but who's the boss of that all right kim belair and what is she doing now where else is she working over there at ubisoft so yeah assassin's creed shadow is gonna be as bad as you think it's going to be because all of the same bad actors well they're still there that's why you need to call this stuff out you might think that all of these woke bros that call everything woke might be the worst thing and i've called them out a time or two by just simply saying that you know by calling everything woke it's not exactly the most streamlined approach to rectifying the issues in the industry but if you don't think that woke storytelling that this room that smells like an open air clam bank isn't ultimately at the center of the destruction of the AAA games industry and you think that it's other problems like nickel and dimers up at the top they know the fat cat businessmen that just want to try to wring every red cent out of the customer with loot boxes microtransactions live service gaming you can walk and chew gum at the same time both of those issues and both 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 of those problems can be true at the same time and fighting those battles on two fronts more than willing to hear those grievances and it's stuff that i talk about a lot but in this specific scenario you already know you already know that there's a multitude of factors at play as to why assassin's creed shadows is so predatory you've got the 130 dollar digital premium gold certified platinum deluxe edition or you can just simply sign up for ubisoft plus the streaming service that's a big problem but then again the japanese man boy love consultant and a sweet baby inc ceo being in the fold on this yeah that's another big problem and that's something that you have to do a little bit of digging in order to figure out is present and then to call it out that's ultimately how we fix this nonsense that we found ourselves in 
So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.